Oh, hi, Maura. Hi, Dolores. And I'm glad you came for Child Advocates. Thanks for having me. Yes, well, um, I have a number of questions because I want to do more for children. Great. And uh, I know you guys do a lot. Of, and uh, I just want to uh, ask you a couple of questions to make things even better. Great. We should all do what we can do. And uh, what do you know about child abuse prevention? Well, the Support Center for Child Advocates is the um, is Philadelphia's volunteer lawyer program for mm -hmm. children who've been abused, neglected, and are in the child welfare system. So, the clients that we work with have already suffered the tragedies of child abuse. Mm -hmm. um, as far as preventing child abuse, I believe that the work we do. Um, Goes, goes a great way to do that. First of all, we are removing the, uh, the abuser, the child. Exactly. That, That's a big thing. That, uh, that individual child will not be abused again because of the work that we do. Right. And that prevents future child abuse. It also um, allows us to come into families that uh, would benefit from support, where the parents could learn to parent better and they would uh, learn the proper tools to handle the stresses of parenthood to identify and respond to their children's needs. That's a good profession. And in that way, we can work to unify families uh, mm -hmm. who've been split apart by neglect and some uh, the minor child abuse that we feel can be corrected with the right uh, programs. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I think in the, in the work that we do, we're able to prevent future child abuse that way. Um, I also think that just in the work, uh, we are bringing attention to the matter of child abuse. And the more we talk about it, the more people are talking about uh, abuse and children is, I think, better for our society as a whole. That it's not the dirty secret, it's not in the shadows anymore. That's right. And I think that's a really important aspect to prevent further abuse. Mm -hmm. And what are your views for hope for the future? Well, I think I touched a little bit on that. I think um, the more we speak about child abuse, the more we talk about it, the more we make victims of child abuse know that when they come forward and talk about what's happened in their lives, they're not only helping themselves gain strength, um, but they're also helping others to see that victims of child abuse uh, speaking out, there is no shame to it. There is no... Um, there's no regret in making that decision, and it can only bring greater attention to it. And also for society, Absolutely. because when you start there, it continues. Absolutely, uh, I agree. And um, I wanted to know if you had any um, services for survivors, but you really work more with children. We work with children. Um, the, our, the children we work with are anywhere from birth to 21. Uh, that's the age range of children who can be in the child welfare system, in foster care or other uh, placement. So when uh, they age out, as they say, when they age out of the system, we no longer can represent them. But yeah. we do um, make sure that all services that the child needs, uh, any of their, all of their needs are met. Um, therapeutic is a big one, making sure that their behavioral health assessments are done so oh. that we can understand um, the trauma that they've lived through and how to get them to the other side. Uh, so I think those services we put in place and then we encourage um, our clients after they leave us, whether it's when they're young and have been adopted uh, and we no longer represent them, we encourage the family con to continue that kind of work. Um, so if, we're our, if our client is an older child, um, we encourage them to seek that kind of help and the services that are available to them. Okay, great. So you really do a lot of child advocates. We do, we do. We represent um, a, over 800 children a year um, and it involves uh, the work of a social worker that we have on staff as well as a volunteer attorney who we uh, recruit, train, and support their work. So the kid gets a lawyer and they also get a social worker mm. and every child has that team focusing not just on what happens in a courtroom, but really what happens in their lives and whether they're getting the proper medical attention, going to the dentist, the therapies that we talked about. I want to realize it did all, all of, that. All of those, all of those supports are in place when, uh, when we're working with our clients. We visit them in their home, we enter into their lives really. We come to their homes with the social worker and the attorney both. They get to know the child and oftentimes the cases are open and active with us for several years. 
Um, and so they get a real chance to have um, somebody in their life who can really help change the story and get them the help that they need, make sure that they're on track, make sure that they're getting the educational services that they deserve. So we really uh, treat, we, we work with the whole child. We call it whole child representation. Oh, I like that word. Yeah. Or sentence, I'm just like, yes, yes. It really, it really yeah. talks to what we do. Yeah. The, uh, that one article that Frank put on the computer about that little girl's eye. Yes. Now, I just don't understand how a judge could, knowing how those parents were, mm -hmm. drug addicts and everything else, could send that child back. And I'm hoping in the future that there'll be like more education and more learning about it, like Frank's trying to put out there. Right. So that will stop, and the judge, judges will open their eyes and see what's going on. Right. So Frank Cervone wrote about the uh, Khalil Wimes mm -hmm. case, and it's a tragedy in our city that a child could um, suffer that fate. And we all know it. There's a, This case is a really difficult one. The judge who made the decision to send the child back may not have had the full information. There's some things in the system that maybe didn't go exactly right. Um, and but what we do at Child Advocates is take any case like that right. um, that happened in the city. It was not our case, but um, we take a look at it and where could we have done better as a system? Where could we have done better as a society for that child? And what changes, what reforms can we put in place and work with uh, the Department of Human Services and work with the court system and make sure that tragedies like this are avoided in the future. And maybe the judge should get more information. And maybe the judge from the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. Because you know that's so sad that to put a child back in that situation. Absolutely. But then you did answer my question. What can we do as a society to protect our children more? Well, I think that's one of it. We can. Um, each of us should speak out, step in. Uh, if you have a, a child in your life, a neighbor, a relative, somebody mm -hmm. that you have that's suspicions, speak up. Uh, you know that child deserves that. It, and that's what my friend Joey, I was about. telling you about. He talks about that too. Absolutely. You're, it's just it's not as bad as the abuser, but it's almost as bad as the abuser when you're silent. When you're silent, and it happens a lot in families and mm -hmm. uh, with friends that they just don't know what to do, um, or they're so, afraid, or they're afraid. Right. Um, so I think we need to break through that. So mm -hmm. definitely speaking up, stepping in. And things like uh, voting for candidates who put children's issues first, uh, so that we know that the laws will be um, in uh, will be taken the best answer. Oh, that's happening more and more. To be truthful, I think you're right. Yeah, I saw it on the internet. Yeah, and I think it's it's important for people when they're choosing a candidate to think about children, not just your taxes and uh, exactly. gun control and other things that may be very important to you, but to think about children, yours and others. And also, do you have adoption in your organization? We, um, about 25% of our cases close with an adoption. So the, the goal of our agency is to um, secure a permanent and nurturing home for every child. Mm -hmm. And that can mean different things. So sometimes, like I was talking about, the family needs a lot of support. Um, you know, mom needs to get cleaned up off of drugs and they, she needs to get some job training. And then she's she's ready to have her kids back. We call that reunification. Okay. Um, another is to um, uh, get a child in a permanent legal custody situation, which is a, uh, a, a legal term, but it does allow a child permanency. They know who their guardian is, and they'll remain with them on a permanent basis. And then adoption, which is where the rights of the, the parent has been terminated, either voluntarily or oftentimes we have to go to court and argue in front of a judge that the parent should no longer have rights. Oh, I'm so happy parent. about that. And especially as an adopted child, that makes me happy. And then, you know, those are the cases that we terminate the child's, uh, the, the parent's right, and then either seek an adoptive family or we already have an adoptive family in mind because the child's maybe been with them in foster care for many years. And we know that it's the safe and, and proper place for that kid. That's so wonderful. Yeah, so we work with adoption agencies quite a bit. Good. And um, all right. Um, I would like to uh, be a guest speaker in your organization some way. I don't know how, and offer my uh, my healing process through my books to other people that might need it. And that's a question that I had. I don't know if it's possible 
but I've been working with my editor, and I've been doing more and more um, presentations. Yeah. And what happens when I do the presentations, when you've seen the first one I did, that I'm, they gave me money and then I give to Todd off again. I know, we're very grateful for that. And really my are. editor, Melanie, is, um, she is trying to get me other places to go to. And she's also adopted four children, which I'm very excited about because um, I'm just so happy for her. And I'm having a big party to celebrate. <laughs> I, I just wanted to get she that in there, even though it's on this interview. <laughs> We're all thrilled about that. Melanie's going to be a great mom. To yes, she is. Good. She's a great person. Um, we, I would, I love your words and your work, and we oftentimes put it on our Facebook page. And, I know you do. Uh, we celebrate you quite a bit because I think that you bring um, amazing heart and feeling to this mission to save children. Thank um, you. And if there's any way that we can continue that work, um, I would love to come hear you speak and. Um, we sometimes have opportunities. Well, my first interview, you couldn't come then. I know. And Frank couldn't, but he says it the next time I have uh, We're coming in the next one. For yes. Sure. Okay. I can't wait okay. to hear. And, all right, so how can other people become involved to help abused or neglected children? Well, with what our, will make a difference? Sure. Yes. Okay. With our agency, uh, there are a lot of ways to get involved. Um, we are always recruiting attorneys uh, to represent the children. And, um, in order to do that, we put our attorneys through um, a full day of training and some court observation and um, continued advanced training throughout their service with us. And it's a, a really wonderful way for lawyers in town and big firms and solo practitioners and, uh, and others to be able to, to give back, to do some pro bono service um, with our kids. There's also many ways for people who are not attorneys to get involved with us. We have uh, the toy drive. Of course, I love. I love the toy I drive. I know. We love the way you love the toy drive. You get so many people engaged and involved. And we feel that it's uh, one of the few ways that we really can um, get volunteers to directly affect a child, where you're purchasing a present for an individual child. And you know, uh, we have volunteers who go that the day of delivery in December where they're knocking on the doors and they're presenting these families with And some of these children might never get a toy. And many of them would not get much at all during mm -hmm. the season. So it's a really great way to become involved in, uh, with us, learn about who we are, and learn about ways that you can improve the life of a child. Um, and there are, um, right now we're doing a program, we're calling it 35 Wish Wishes. I saw that on Facebook. 35 Wishes yes. for our 35th anniversary. Our agency. Yeah, like an example, like what I did for the, uh, the, the child going to camp. Sending a child to camp, yes. which is amazing. Yeah. And uh, we have um, a lot of wishes. Kids have, have started to tell us what they might like. And it's trips to amusement parks and um, uh, dance lessons. A oh, camp, any of it, right? A camp session. So what we're trying to do is identify kids who have small, realistic wishes, something that wouldn't be um, super expensive for a donor, and um, and then match them with a donor like you. Mm -hmm. You know, we put the call out for a kid to go to camp, and you were able to step up, and mm -hmm. uh, and others are doing the same. And that's a really neat way to uh, get is. involved with kids that really don't have much, and they wouldn't be able to have these things if it weren't for people like you and our other. Uh, donors and volunteers. Thank and you so much. Thank you. Well, anyhow, what do you do there? I'm the Director of Development Communications, so mm -hmm. I'm in charge of fundraising. Um, our agency is, uh, our budget is about $2.2 .2 million a year, um, where we are able to serve, as I said, over 800 children a year. Um, we get a little bit of money from government, but most of it is raised charitably. Mm -hmm. So uh, I work with Frank Servone, our Executive Director, and a team of um, my staff, and we raise money through foundations, from individuals and from corporate entities. And we put on uh, fundraising events and other ways of kind of convincing people that- Like oh, also the run, because I went We do the Bar yes. Association 5K run, which mm -hmm. is really fun. That's in May. We mm -hmm. have our big gala in April. And coming up uh, next October- The golf. Is our golf classic. Mm -hmm. So we do uh, a lot of really fun ways to raise money and also to raise attention, uh, to raise our profile. The more people know about us and know that the work that we do, uh, I think it's better for the kids. You know, the, the more money we can bring in, the more kids we can serve. So it's, that's right. you know, every time, every time we can bring in 
enough money, we can hire a new social worker who can take on 60 more kids a year, we can recruit more attorneys, we can make those matches uh, and team up the, the lawyer and social worker for the kids. And, and our goal is to just keep serving, keep serving more children. Thank you so much well, for coming here. Really glad to be here. Thank you so much. And, and I just want to say at the end of this interview, uh, these are words that my friend Jeremy wrote. Uh, he's in a, another group called Fighters Against Child Abuse. They are a bunch of boxers, which is really fascinating that they do this, yeah, which I think is right. wonderful. And this is his quote. For children, a hit should be a song they are listening to. A slap should be the drum they are learning to play. The punch should be what they are drinking. A kick should be what they are doing to a ball. A bite should be what they are doing to a slice of pizza. And a tear should be one of joy, not one of pain. Words have many meanings. Actions only have one. Which one will you choose, Joey? Well, thank you, dear, for coming today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This was fun. Anything we did?